Howdy folks, hope you've all had a great weekend, and welcome to another episode of Mingles with Jingles. It's been a quiet couple of weeks. I mean, there's plenty been going on in the PC gaming world, it's just that I haven't really been interested in most. In fact, I'm in much the same situation that I was at around about this time last year, and now that I come to think about it, the year before, with regards to the big release Christmas games. I just don't care. Well, with one exception. But we'll talk about that later. For now, games like the new Call of Duty game, the new Battlefield game, and I'm struggling to give a shit. Call of Duty Vanguard's already out. I suspect they're trying to steal the march on the new Battlefield 2042 game, get it out early, because initial reviews are not very good. I mean, the multiplayer apparently is fun, but Call of Duty multiplayer always was. And I found that the multiplayer in Call of Duty was always easier to get into than the multiplayer in Battlefield. Note that I'm not trying to say Call of Duty multiplayer is better than Battlefield multiplayer, that's a can of worms I am definitely not going to open, and it's an entirely different discussion. I'm just saying that it was easier for a noob like me to get into, get a couple of kills, and at least feel as if I was doing something useful. But I never really got that in Battlefield. Any time I've ever tried the multiplayer in a Battlefield game, I'm not saying it's bad at all, I'm just saying that I constantly got owned. And it was just frustrating. And for me, not fun to play. Now, your mileage, depending on how good you are in first-person shooters, is obviously going to vary. That's why I'm not trying to say the one is any better than the other. But I always felt that the multiplayer in Call of Duty was just easier for noobs like me to get into. Even if you don't do particularly well in it, you could at least do something. I never felt as if I was just wasting my time even trying, which was the experience that I had whenever I played Battlefield multiplayer. Note, of course, that there were no review copies for Call of Duty Vanguard sent out. Ah, that's always a bad sign, isn't it? <laughs> it's almost as if Activision didn't want anybody putting up any negative reviews ahead of the release date. Because, trust me, there have been a lot of negative reviews coming in since the release date. Mostly focusing on the single player. Most of the reviews that I've read have all said that the multiplayer in Call of Duty Vanguard is at least okay, and generally pretty good. The single player campaign, however, not so much. Which is kind of surprising, because the single player has always been Call of Duty's strong point. I mean, the multiplayer has always been fairly solid as well, but the single player has always been the thing that set the Call of Duty series apart from the Battlefield series and its spin-offs, where the single player has been universally terrible. Well, when they've even bothered to put in any kind of single-player content at all. So, things are actually looking fairly good for Battlefield 2042 when it releases on the 19th of November, despite the fact that Call of Duty Vanguard tried to jump the gun and get the release out early, grab some early sales before people are forced to choose between the two. Um, doesn't look as if it's actually going to hurt Battlefield. I don't care either way, of course. I'm not going to be playing either of them. I wasn't that interested in Call of Duty Vanguard in the first place, and the news that it has a weak single-player campaign has cemented that opinion. Which is kind of surprising, because we'd have to try real hard to have a worse single-player campaign than Call of Duty World War II, which was just a train wreck of cliches. And the Battlefield series have only ever really stuck a single-player content in as an afterthought, uh, when they've even bothered to do that much, so I really don't care about either of these games. Now. That's not to say that there aren't any games that I'm not looking forward to. I am. Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl, for example, but that's not due out until the middle of next year. Total War, Warhammer 3? Yeah, but that's still at least three months away. There doesn't really seem to be anything coming out in time for Christmas that I have to look forward to. In fact, if you take a look at the list of game releases for November and December 2021, it is very depressing news. So. November. Just Dance 2022. <laughs> I'll pass. Call of Duty Vanguard, we've already covered. Forza Horizon 5, I'm sure is going to be extremely good at what it does, but I just don't care about driving games. Oh wait, hold on, there's a next-gen console version of Grand Theft Auto 5 coming out. I'm sure you'll all be relieved to hear it. That's right. Another remastered version of an eight-year-old game. I swear Rockstar must have pushed out more versions of Grand Theft Auto V than Bethesda has done with Skyrim. 
and that includes the next-gen version of Skyrim that's coming out for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Then there's a couple of games I have never heard of coming out on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I have a Switch, but I can't remember the last time I used it, so I don't care. Battlefield 2042, already talked about that, 19th of November, still don't care. And then, well, it's listed as coming out on the 23rd of November, but it's been pushed back a couple of weeks apparently to December. The Endwalker expansion for Final Fantasy XIV. And I am so done with Final Fantasy XIV, so I don't care about that either. Then we get into December. Guess what? More Switch games. Advance Wars 1 and 2. Reboot, so more remakes of existing games. There's another Nintendo Switch game coming out called, wait for it, I'm not making this up, Danganronpa Decadence. <laughs> I almost cared enough about the title to go and look it up and then remembered it was a Nintendo Switch game so I didn't bother. 8th of December we've got Halo Infinite, finally a PC game, but it's Halo so I don't care. And another PC game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. And I'm not 12, so I don't care. So, a whole bunch of upcoming Christmas game releases that I just... I know Akazuki. That's right, little girl. There's bugger all to get excited about. I know how you feel. Yes, I know. I'm telling the people. <laughs> don't worry, I won't forget. She's such a critic. I mean, uh, half or more of the titles that were announced are either for handheld devices or next-gen consoles. So, yeah, don't give a shit. But even the PC releases are just meh. I suspect, however, that this list is not 100% comprehensive. I got it from radiotimes.com. Because they have completely failed to mention one... Well, not exactly a major release, but definitely not a small release either. Uh, one release, which in fact comes out tomorrow, that I have been looking forward to and I am interested in playing and do care about. Jurassic World Evolution 2. It comes out tomorrow. These are the kind of games that I seem to be more interested in lately than the big blockbuster titles like Call of Duty Vanguard and Battlefield 2042, for example. I mean, those are titles that aim to set the world on fire on release. I mean, these are games that have had hundreds of millions of dollars spent on development and probably more on marketing. Jurassic World Evolution 2? Probably not. I mean, it's not a small game, but it's not a AAA mega-budget PC Christmas release. But it's probably the game that I'm going to be playing the most over the course of the next few months. Well, that and Far Cry 6. Yeah, I know, I know, wait, hear me out. <laughs> I know Far Cry 6 isn't very good, but I've learned to lower my expectations since Far Cry New Dawn. And I wasn't expecting Far Cry 6 to be very good. I was expecting it to be just more of the same Far Cry, um, with a slightly different skin. And that's kind of exactly what it is. But the story... <laughs> it's not good. But it's not good in a different way to how Far Cry New Dawn was not good. Far Cry New Dawn was absolutely terrible. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. The characters that you were supposed to care about were complete idiots in a way that wasn't even funny. And the characters that you were supposed to hate were just tiresome. The script railroaded you into doing the dumbest things imaginable. Things that you never would do if you didn't have to simply to get the plot to move along. And there are certain comparisons and parallels that you can draw there with Far Cry 6 which features quite a few of the same features, but the difference in Far Cry 6 is that it doesn't take itself as seriously as Far Cry New Dawn did. And where Far Cry 6 is crap, unlike Far Cry New Dawn, it's amusingly crap, in a way that I don't think it was ever intended to be, and that's kind of the trick. I think the best way to describe it. It's like the difference between a movie that's made by people who are trying. You know, they're, they're really trying to make a good movie, but they're all incompetent, <laughs> and so they make a bad movie. A movie like Suburban Sasquatch, look it up, you won't be disappointed, or the famous one, of course, The Room. 
And then you have other studios like Troma, who make movies like The Toxic Avenger, Cannibal the Musical, things like that. And they know they're not making great art, but they're not trying to make a bad movie. They're trying to make a good, schlocky, low-budget B-movie. They're not trying to punch above their weight. They know exactly what they can achieve, and generally they manage to achieve that. And these kind of movies, if you're into that sort of thing, are quite enjoyable. And then you have the studios who make movies like Sharknado. Low-budget exploitation flicks deliberately trying to cash in on the whole subgenre of movies where they are so bad they are unintentionally good. They go out and they hire people like David Hasselhoff, for God's sake. <laughs> And, I mean, that can have its charm, but more often than not it just falls flat on its face because people can see through it. They're trying too hard to be bad. They're not genuinely trying to do the best that they can and just failing due to incompetence or lack of budget or often both. They're deliberately trying to be bad, and often they're trying just that little too hard for it to work. And that is Far Cry New Dawn. Trying way too hard and failing, and not even failing in an amusing way. I don't know, maybe, maybe those weren't perfect parallels. The thing is, Far Cry 6 is terrible. It is just so bad and stupid. But they were clearly at least trying to do something different with it, even if they failed horribly, and that's where the source of the amusement comes from. Far Cry New Dawn, on the other hand, just gave the impression that it had been pushed out by a bunch of people who didn't have the talent or the inclination and were simply doing it in order to satisfy the shareholders who expected some kind of DLC to come out six months after the release of Far Cry 5. And it really, really showed. Again, remember, I am not trying to tell you that Far Cry 6 is a good game. It is not. It is hilariously stupid. But it's hilariously stupid. It's not just stupid. And that's the difference. Actually, you know, now that I come to think of it, that's a fairly good topic of conversation for discussion. I mean, I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head right now, but do you have any games that you enjoy playing that you know are utter garbage, <laughs> but you somehow still find them amusing and entertaining? I mean, I haven't sat down to think about any particular examples, but I suspect that certain Electronic Arts titles are probably going to feature quite prominently, like the NBA games or the FIFA Football or the John Madden series because they are completely creatively bankrupt. The NBA 2K games in particular, they're just loot box simulators, and yet they sell millions and millions of copies, so clearly somebody's enjoying them. Actually, while we're on the subject, sort of, maybe I should reinstall Grand Theft Auto V. I mean, I can do without Grand Theft Online, that's kind of meh. But Grand Theft Auto is a really, really good game, even if it is eight, nine years old. And I never actually finished it. I got stuck and gave up on it years ago, I can't remember when. A long time ago. It was during one of the missions where you had to fly a light cargo aircraft. What was it? A cargo aircraft. A light aircraft. Single engine Cessna or something. And the flight controls were just so arse about face, I, I just couldn't do it. Maybe I should give it another go. Let me know what you think. Anyway, that's enough about games for now. At least until I think of something else. Meanwhile, on the home front, as I'm sure most of you are probably aware, two weeks ago my little dog Boo died. Uh, don't worry, I'm I'm over it, or as over it as I'm ever going to be. And I do have two other pets, two cats. Akazuki, you all know, she's going to be three in January. Wow, time flies. But I have another cat, and she's getting on a bit. Juzi is uh, a Dutch ginger tabby, and she's a really sweet and affectionate cat. But I have noticed over the last couple of months that she's starting to struggle to get around a bit. She likes being perched up high on the furniture, and she's starting to struggle to actually reach her favourite spots. And I've noticed that she's not getting up and down the stairs as easily as she used to. I think she's coming down with arthritis. And that's the thing about animals, they, they don't know they're getting old. In her head, she, she still thinks she's a kitten. Actually, that's, that's true of us as well. I mean, I know I'm 50 watt, most days I feel like I'm 51, but in my head I'm still 17, until I look in the mirror. <laughs> but anyway, in order to make life a bit easier for Juzi, I've bought some steps, so she can get up and down from her favourite perches a lot more easily. 
Um, there's one next to the bed. Because the second I go to bed at night, within a minute, Juzi's there. And she's even struggling to jump up onto the bed. So there's a set of footsteps next to the bed so she can get in and out of bed without having to stress. She's got a favourite perching spot on the windowsill in the bedroom. And I've put a set of steps up there so she can get up and down from there without any trouble. And the place where she spends most of her time during the day is in the man cave right next to the computer desk where I'm recording this right now. There's a cat tree and she likes to sit on top of the cat tree just so she can be near me and she goes to sleep there. And she's really been struggling to get up to the top of the cat tree so there's a set of steps there for her as well. Why am I telling you all this? I don't know really. <laughs> it's just, well, pet owners know what I'm talking about. We, we love our pets. I mean, in this country in particular, and I'm sure I mentioned this in another video at some point, but I can't remember which one. In Britain, there was a Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, before there was a Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. In fact, as several of you pointed out in the other video where I mentioned this that I can't remember, Britain still doesn't have a Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. It has a National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Yes, in Britain, looking after animals and making sure they're not mistreated gets royal patronage. Looking after children and making sure they don't get mistreated does not. And honestly, I've seen the way children treat their parents. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is a bad thing. I'm going to catch hell for that in the comments. <laughs> but, well, I'm being honest here. I love animals more than I love children. Well, not just children, people in general. Um, I have absolutely no shame in saying I love animals more than I love people. Animals will never steal from you, they will never betray you, they will never try to rip you off, they will never leave negative YouTube comments, <laughs> they will never post mean tweets about you. The only thing you ever get from an animal is love. Um, can't say that about people. Uh, but Jingles, you only say that because you don't have any children of your own. Well, none that I know of. But yeah, you're probably right. I, you never hear women say that, do you? <laughs> you got any kids? Oh, none that I know of. No, doesn't? No. Yeah. Yes, I know, I know. I know why you never hear women say that. <laughs> Look. It was funny in my head when I said it, alright? Just leave me alone. Let's move on. Anyway, uh, that about does it for this week's episode of Miggles with Jingles. I mean, there were other things games related that I could have talked about, but mostly I just don't care enough. Submarines in World of Warships, for example, is going about as well as you might have imagined. Major changes. You know, at this stage in the development process, they're supposed to be making small, iterative changes just to fine-tune and polish it before they unleash submarines on the gaming population as a whole. But nope, nope, still massive changes. They still have no idea what they're doing with submarines. They're in full-on panic mode trying to find some way of making them work. You know, when you see live streamers on Twitch, people who have, and I'm not mentioning any names here, but people who have never had anything but good things to say about Wargaming, and even they are pulling their hair out in frustration over submarines and the way that they're impacting gameplay, you know there's a fairly big problem. But I'm not going to spend this entire episode talking about World of Warships and Wargaming. Instead, we're done. Do let me know, by the way, if you have any guilty pleasures, any games that you know are utter dog shit, absolutely terrible, but you just can't help playing them. You don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> Do let me know in the comments if you have any little guilty gaming pleasures, games that you know are complete dog shit, but you somehow can't stop yourself from playing them anyway. It'll be quite amusing to see what sort of titles you all come up with. But that's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you're all going to have a great week. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.